Hey everyone, it's Eric Johnson, and in this video, what we're going to discuss, we wanna talk about staying on the ground. It's so, so important. So why is it so critical to stay on the ground when you throw? It's a pretty simple concept. It's a basic concept of science, right? I got, I have friction. If I'm on the ground and I push against something, I'm going to be pushing against it. I've got the connect chain and I'm forcing or I'm forcing pressure against it. If I come off the ground, I'm going to have no friction and the ball is now or the discus is going to be pushing back on me. So here's the thing. I do come across, I stumble across things because I everything I do is throwing and I see these videos and I see these videos where people are working all this stuff where they're working up into the air. They're either teaching to jump or they're working on one leg or they're doing all these crazy things. The bottom line is you've got to stay on the ground. Did I make that clear? You can't be up in the air when you're trying to throw. It just defies physics. Sorry, it's not my opinion. It's just how it works. You can work against the ground and come off the ground at a certain point, but you have to work the ground properly. You come off the ground too soon and you're doing drills that teach you to come up in the air. It's a recipe for disaster. So here's what we're doing. One of the things is we see some drills and, and people are teaching too much elevation. They're teaching one-legged stuff. Now listen, I do some one-legged throws, but here's how we do a one-legged throw. Right, we work that position, we focus on the transfer from our pillar five and six, and so when we do heavy weighted stuff, we're working how to create this angle, and we're working how to come down to the ground. The kind of staying up in the air is counterintuitive. I understand there's some, the train of thought, and I understand why sometimes drills are being taught, especially kind of this type of drill, but when you throw, if you actually do this in a real throw, it's gonna be a recipe for disaster. So, one of the things, again, I, when I create these videos, I like to make sure that I'm really clarifying. Some drills are made for very advanced athletes, super intuitive athletes, because they're going to be working on a lot of high level stuff. A lot of these types of drills that you may come across or encounter where you're working off the ground or partially on the ground, i.e. one foot on the ground, those are not necessarily good for most. So here's my tip for the day. When you look at throws, let's take a look at some of a few throwers right now. Best women's discus throw in the world, Sandra Prokovic. She stays on the ground. She just smashes the crap out of the ground. One of my favorite all-time throwers is Robert Harding, non-reverser works the ground. Look at Gerd Cantor. So let's look at reversing discus throwers. When we look at somebody like Gerd Cantor, look at how long he stays on the ground during delivery. Boom, and he comes off. It's a thing of beauty. He works the ground a long time. If you look at the current best throwers in the world, Frederick Dockers, you're looking at Guz Diaz, all these reversing throwers have a very low amount of time up in the air and they stay on the ground a long time through the delivery. Now let's take a look at some men's shot put. Now if we're looking at somebody like Tom Walsh, his, his PRs in his 22 plus big meter throws compared to like three years ago when he was throwing in the only 70 feet before he started throwing like 74 feet. But the biggest difference is he started working that ground a little longer. Ryan Krauser is probably one of the best at really work in the ground the time look at look at as we look through delivery look at the position of his block look at the position of his delivery leg very little time off the ground and that right foot as it comes through on his reverse very low to the ground same thing you're gonna see look at Darrell Hill he just had probably one of the greatest series in the history of the sport at the Diamond League final the IAAF Diamond League final look at what he did four measured throws over 22 meters and two toe fouls at 22 plus meters 22 40 on the day huge day 73 5. look at the time he spends so much time working the ground that's the key the more time you're on the ground the more time you can apply force to the implement whether that's the shot or whether that's the discus we're going to be able to spend more time more time we're getting that hip we're applying pressure we're accelerating the implement through the delivery and that's the key. As soon as you start to elevate, that starts to come down. That's why in one of our recent videos, we just posted up the drill down. Simple drill to teach throwers how to work the ground. So here's my tip. Stay on the ground. Understand why you got to stay on the ground because you can generate more speed and force and understand that a lot of those one-legged drills, they get passed around and people come up with stuff. I'm telling you, it's just not productive. Do drills that mimic the throw. Stay on the ground. Teach athletes. And if you're a thrower, learn how to work the ground properly. The sequence 
live. That's again why we have the throwing chain reaction system. That's why we throw these videos up because we want to help clear up confusion. There's so much information out there. That's a great thing. And sometimes there's too much and you don't know if you're new and you're coming across videos. And I've said this before, you may not know what's good and what's not good. So that's what we want to make sure that we pay attention to. So at any rate, ho hopefully you like that. How about if we go give the subscribe a little hip check. Be sure to like, comment. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.